Well, between David and Andy, they've actually basically said everything I'm going to say, so you're just, just kidding. Sorry. Sorry. Two men were walking on their way to work, and they're actually running late on this particular day. And so as they're on their way, they see this field that they can cut through that'll shave some time off their arrival time. And so they decide to hop into this field. And as they're on their way, they're about halfway through the field when all of a sudden they hear some weird noises. And they're kind of looking around, looking at each other like, what's going on? And they look in a particular spart, spot of the fenced-in area and they find a very angry bull. And so these men immediately, they book it for the closest part of the fence that they can reach. And it is becoming very, very clear to them they're not going to make it. So one man, he yells to his friend. He says, John, we're in for it, man. You got to put up a prayer. Otherwise, we are in trouble. And John, while he's panting, he says, I I can't do it. I've never prayed a public prayer in my life. I don't know how to pray out loud. And his friend naturally and calmly says, come on, man. We are in trouble. There's There's a no better time to learn how to pray out loud than now. Otherwise, we are not going to make it. So John, he thinks on this while they're running, of course. And he says, okay, okay, I'll pray the one prayer I know. And this is, this is a prayer that my father would pray with us as we gathered around the table. And his friend says, go for it. So he says, all right. Oh Lord, for what we're about to receive, make us truly thankful. <laughs> I have to be honest. In all the time I've spent in church, I've always rolled my eyes whenever there's the uh, predictable pre-Thanksgiving sermon on thankfulness. And yet, the Lord says, all right, you're going to preach that one yet. (laughs) That's why this morning, it's think thankful thoughts. Let's try and say that three times fast. It's actually kind of challenging. Because... uh, That's the message that I feel like is mostly communicated in these messages. I've always thought they were kind of cheesy and cliche and predictable to have a a sermon talking about thankfulness right before a holiday on thankfulness. We hear texts like 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Or maybe Colossians 3, 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you, and with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to the Father. These verses, they emphasize that we as the people of God should give thanks to God in how we live our lives and because of Jesus. But I know that uh, when I hear these kinds of sermons, I can't help but ask, why should I be thankful? And this is the question we're actually going to look at today. This question is not asked out of rebellion demanding evidence as to why we should thank God. The goal of this question is to help deepen a sense of gratitude and thankfulness in our hearts, especially after the year we've had. We have a God who wants us to have this kind of honest dialogue with him. Maybe these questions uh, would look like, look something like this. God, how can I be thankful when I've had to be socially distant from friends and family this year? God, how can I be thankful when our nation has faced uh, tragedy, fear, and violence this year? God, how can I be thankful when my well-being and lifestyle has been impacted by the events of this year? God, how can I be thankful when the future can be so unsure and daunting? Maybe you've had questions like this, or maybe not. But either way, uh, as the people of God, we're called to live our lives with thankfulness. And today we're going to look at areas in our lives where we find reasons to be thankful. Between the words exalt, praise, and the different forms of thanks in the Bible, there are 585 uh, references of some sort of positive recognition or uh, thankfulness in Scripture. And the psalm we're looking at today is only a small part of that. We're going to be in Psalm 118. And it's not because this is the sole chapter on thankfulness. 
but rather it shows a broad range of thankfulness. This psalm, it's commonly attributed to uh, David because it, it, it's similar to other psalms that he's written, but it's not attributed to him as the author specifically. So we're going to refer him to the psalmist as David for now, just because that's what's assumed. We're looking at this psalm because David, he shows us many reasons to be thankful. The first area of thankfulness that we can find in Scripture that we all kind of land in when, when it comes to being thankful, is thankfulness in circumstances. This is thankfulness for uh, maybe what we would call the extras in life. The things that we receive that show the overflow of God's goodness. Things we can never deserve, but are just abundant in our life anyway. This is what David says, Psalm 118, 5 through 13. From my distress, I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is for me. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I will look with satisfaction on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I will surely cut them off. They surrounded me. Yes, they surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I will surely cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They were extinguished as a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I will surely cut them off. You pushed me violently so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. So what's David's circumstantial thankfulness in this psalm so far? Well, it sounds like he's saying, I will thank the Lord because I didn't die today. <laughs> or in other words, I will thank the Lord because he gave me victory in battle. Even if David lost this battle, he would still have given God praise because God is still worthy of praise. But because there is victory, David is praising him even more. And we all land in this category uh, most of the time. When something good happens to us or when we're overwhelmed with uh, blessings around us like friends and families or daily provisions or whatever else it is, all of these things are worthy of thankfulness to God. But what happens when they're not there? What happens to our thankfulness when trials and hardships come? We've already said it a lot. This has been a crazy year. <laughs> and we faced a lot what about when relationships are strained, jobs are lost, or when tragedy strikes? What happens to our thankfulness when our circumstances don't call for it? Is God still worthy of our thanks? Although thankfulness is good when we uh, thank God for our good circumstances, if we're only thankful when things are good, then it won't last because good circumstances never last. We can look at the Israelites when God brought them out of Egypt uh, through the Red Sea. Uh, Exodus chapter 15, the beginning of the chapter, they are praising God because he has saved them from the oppression of Egypt and he's established them as his people. But at the very end of the chapter, it says, all of a sudden they realize there's no water near them. They become thirsty and because of this, they grumble. I've always laughed at Exodus chapter 15 because at the beginning, these people are so grateful. Their circumstances are good, but when things go bad, their thankfulness goes away. If we're only thankful because of our circumstances, then we'll quickly become unthankful and angry like Israel in the wilderness. Not because God's not good, but because circumstances change. Living with thankfulness that rises above circumstances is not easy. The loss and pain that we experience in this world is not invalid. We have the right to be sad and to mourn when circumstances change. But we're called to a deeper sense of thankfulness when circumstances don't call for thanksgiving. We're called to look beyond our current situation to a deeper sense of gratitude. For those who experience circumstances of loss and hurt, we can find a heart of praise in knowing what David said in Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. God is not the one that causes our broken circumstances, but draws near to comfort those who are hurting and need his presence. Thanks be to God for uh, a, a God who is near, who wants to comfort us when we hurt. God does not tell those who are broken and crushed by their circumstances to get over it and be thankful. 
Instead, he calls us to look at him in all circumstances. The God whose own son was killed for those who don't deserve it promises to be near, to comfort, and to mourn with those who experience hurt and loss. We gain a deeper sense of thanksgiving when we look beyond our circumstance in both the good and the bad at the God who is constant through it all. There's a song that's sung during the uh, Passover feast that, that celebrates God bringing his people out of Egypt. And the song is called Dainu, which means it would have been enough. And here's some examples of, of the verses of that song. If he'd taken us out of Egypt and not made judgments on the Egyptians, Dainu, it would have been enough. If he had given us the Torah, the law, and not brought us into the land of Israel, the promised land, Dainu, it would have been enough. Verse after verse, th this song, it challenges the one singing and reflecting on it to have this heart of thankfulness that goes beyond circumstances. I remember being blown away the first time I heard that song uh, because it's so beautiful and yet so challenging. It looks at every good thing that God has given and it gives thanks, but in a way that says, if this were the only thing I received, it would be enough. I would be content. When our circumstances are good, we should most definitely give thanks to God. This is what the book of James tells us. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. And when our circumstances are not good, it doesn't mean that we don't have a reason to be thankful. God's goodness does not end when the goodness of my circumstances change. James is not just saying that God owns everything that is good and disowns everything that is bad. He's saying that God is responsible for everything good because he is good. We can be thankful in spite of our circumstances because he is good constantly. Even when life seems to be falling apart, we have reason for thanks that is found in God's character and not my circumstances. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> You helping me? Let's continue to look deeper into the question why we should be thankful. This is my interpreter right here. What? Introduce us. That's my nephew, Joe, right there. And he's hiding now. But you can, you can meet the celebrity after service. <laughs> Another source of thankfulness that... Uh, again, we all land here, and it's actually why we're here this morning a lot of the time, is uh, thankfulness for salvation. We should be thankful each day because God saved us from the debt of death that our sinfulness uh, incurred. And he offers life away from that death by faith in his work, teaching, and sacrifice that his son provided an immersion in his name. This is how David puts it, Psalm 118, 14 through 26. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I will not die, but live and tell of the works of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I shall enter through them. I shall give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. I shall give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, do save us, we beseech you. O oh Lord, we beseech you, do send prosperity. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Here David is praising God for salvation in two different ways. First, circumstantial salvation from the victory that, that he won, but also salvation that comes from being part of God's people. David is praising God as the source of salvation, both circumstantial and eternal. And what's cool about this psalm is that it's also used in reference to salvation we have in Christ. Peter describes Jesus as the stone that the builders rejected that has now become the chief cornerstone. 
And then the people cried out, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. When Jesus came in riding on a donkey during his uh, triumphal uh, entrance the week before he died on the cross. This psalm points to Jesus' mission to save all people and is another source of thankful response for us. We come to church, we sing songs, we take communion and hear from God's scripture because we are thankful for the salvation we've received. We are thankful for salvation because, well, we're saved from judgment of sin. We are thankful for salvation because we're given a resurrected life in Christ that leads us away from sin and death. We are called to give thanks to the God who planned to save us from the very beginning. After uh, the fall into sin, God told Satan that he would put enmity between Eve's offspring and Satan. And that Satan might bruise the offspring's heel, but the offspring will crush his head. This is a reference to Christ's victory at the cross. We are called to give thanks to the God who has faithfully planned from the start our salvation and salvation for all people. But we're also warned to avoid a heart of comparison and pride in our salvation. The danger we're faced with uh, comes when my thankfulness is based around the salvation that I've received and not the God who freely gives it. When our thankfulness stays focused on me, then we miss out on a deeper sense of thanks and are in danger of pride like the Pharisee in Jesus' parable that said, uh, Lord, I thank you, not for the life you've given me, but I'm, that I'm not like that sinner, tax collector, just a few feet away. Paul warns the Ephesian church in Ephesians chapter 2, reminding the church that at one point we were all caught in sin and guilty of sin until we put our lives into the hands of Jesus who did all the work. We did nothing to earn this. When salvation becomes about me, we might still be thankful, but our perspective is limited. We can easily grumble about our life in Christ when uh, those who don't believe in God might have an easier time in this world. We can easily forget that we did not deserve this great salvation and compare ourselves to others. We are called to a deeper thankfulness for salvation that comes when we turn our eyes from the salvation I've received to the God who is faithful and saved all who will come to him. Our thankfulness for circumstances and for salvation will last longer and will be deeper when it's focused on our God who is faithful, just, and constant. That's the true reason why we should be thankful because we have a faithful God. And this is actually the theme in David's psalm, how he begins and ends this psalm, Psalm 118, 1, 27, and 29. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. You are my God, and I give thanks to you. You are my God, I extol you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Why should I give thanks to God? Because he is good and his love endures forever. Because God is constant even when my circumstances change. Because his plan has always been to save those who follow him. When our thankfulness is focused on the God who never changes, that naturally flows into everything else. When we are thankful that God is constant, we see his faithfulness in his plan to save all people and bring them to a knowledge of the truth, as Paul says in 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 4. When I am thankful for God's faithful goodness and justice, I can praise him even more when my circumstances abound with blessing, and I can still praise him in spite of bad circumstances because he is constantly good. When we are thankful for God's constant goodness, love, and justice, then our response is, will be similar to Paul's in Romans eleven thirty three through 36. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Paul, the deep-thinking theologian, was brought to speak poetry of praise to God because of God's faithful and constant character and love. 
Why should I be thankful? Because we have a God who is always worthy of our thankfulness. I actually came across this video this week, and I thought it was pretty fitting for this message. Well, um, it has been an unprecedented year. Crazy. With all the... the This stuff? Yeah. It's unprecedented how many times we've actually heard the word unprecedented. (laughs) Our dream vacation was canceled. You got to keep the job you don't like. Uh You know they can see you? But let me tell you all the no's, friends. Um, No going to restaurants, no movie theaters, no movie theater popcorn, no state parks, no going to athletic events, no church services, and no... Don't say it. Don't. Hey, kids! You've got to be more careful with the toilet paper! This is all we have! All the drive-by birthday parties, graduations, <laughs> baby showers. I will say this, I thought it was a little awkward throwing out that baby shower gift in the front yard. You weren't supposed to do that. It just feels like a wasted year. I said it, I said it. Yeah, there's, there's just all the time at home. Boom! And all the time that we were made to spend together. Hey, honey! Honey! Leave me alone! All the heart-to-hearts. Mm. Goodness. Speaking of hearts, our son, Jason, right over there, said yes to Jesus. Right at that kitchen table. July 17th, 2020. You know, I guess it's not really wasted time because God didn't waste a moment of it. I think I have the answer to what I'm thankful for. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? Everything. Everything. I hope uh, there were none of that was super relatable. Like, if the leave me alone thing was, was something that was a reality for a lot of you, I'm here to talk with you afterwards. <laughs> Just kidding. I love that video because of the statement, uh, I guess it wasn't wasted time because God didn't waste a moment of it. That is a statement that removes my thankfulness from just what I have and what I've received to God and what he's doing in our world. So, Actually, we're, we're coming to the point where, where Tristan and I have been here for almost a year. Uh, and if you were going to tell me we were going to have the year that we've had when I first started, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> but it's been awesome to see how God has been moving in spite of the craziness. A lot of things have changed and, and upgraded and just a lot of relationships have built because of the craziness. Every response of thankfulness, whether it's because of circumstances or because of salvation, must first flow from the acknowledgement of God's amazing activity and movement in this world that's far beyond our comprehension. God is good. When my thankfulness is based on God's greatness and not my circumstances, it will last through the storms of life. This kind of thankfulness is not easy, again, because life is not easy. Oftentimes, this level of thankfulness might seem kind of crazy. I always think of the apostles praising God because they were beaten within an inch of their life for the name of Christ. That seems a bit crazy, doesn't it? But in reality, thankfulness that reaches beyond our circumstances to the God who is faithful and constant in a world that is only constant in change and hurt will give glory to God. It will lead others to Him. Why should I be thankful? Because we have a God who is constant and faithful no matter what our circumstances are. How do we maintain this kind of thankfulness? The kind that exceeds me in my circumstances? That's the question we need to continually ask and reflect on. No matter what we're experiencing, we always have a reason to be thankful because God is always faithful and constant in goodness and justice. And he is working his plan for redemption in this world even when we can't see it. 
Billy Graham said it this way, uh, I've read the last page of the Bible and it's all going to turn out all right. Why should I be thankful? Because God's got this. I can't remember who said that. Andy, who, who says that? Why should I be thankful? Because God is working things out even when I don't see them. Why should I be thankful? Because God is good and his love endures forever. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you. We thank you for for everything you've given us, but God, we also want to take time to thank you for uh, you being you. That you don't just love us, but scripture actually tells us you are love. That goodness is what you are. That your love is everlasting. And that you are faithful and just. God, and I pray you help us remember that when we face hard circumstances. I pray that you help us uh, look to you no matter what we are facing in life. Help us always remember that you are near, that you love us, and that you are working to redeem everything for your plan. And we pray this all in your son's name. Amen.